about nowadays is simply to control people as slaves and make them completely dependent on this exploitive machine that's ruining the planet and that's ruining the quality of life for all living entities. Uh, and this is all based on this demoniac idea that we can exploit the resources of God. If there's some minerals in the ground, then we can take big trucks and dig it all out and take it and, and melt it down and make cars and trains and planes and buildings and all kinds of stuff. It's unnecessary. It's actually unnecessary. Huh? Now we know enough about organic gardening. Not, not we personally, but the experts know enough about gardening that in a hundred square foot or no, thousand square foot garden, you can grow enough food for one person for a year. Huh? A thousand square feet. What is that? About 30 by 30 feet. 10 meters square. 100 square meters. You can grow, if you know what you're doing and, and you know how to condition the soil, you can grow enough food to feed yourself. Now, what is the need for all these huge factory farms and big tractors and railroads and, and ships shipping food all over the world and all the, It's completely unnecessary. Try to understand. It's completely useless. This is called Ugra Karma. Ugra Karma means unnecessary, useless, demoniac work. So they have the whole world enslaved in this Ugra Karma economy. This economy that has to grow, grow and grow and grow and grow. And what's, it, what's fueling this economy? Oil. But now we've passed the peak oil. Oil production all over the world is diminishing and it will continue to diminish. So this whole idea of growth, progress, and all that uh, is finished. Try to understand. We are downsizing. We have to. We're out of resources. We're out of arable land. We're out of water. We're out of oil. We're out of everything. All the resources that have accumulated in the earth for millions of years are being destroyed, used up by this demoniac society. You see? So Prahlad is saying, don't listen to this nonsense. Don't accept this materialistic education. And Gato is saying the same thing. This, this education is not for your benefit. It's so that you can be exploited, so that you can be used, so that you can become a cog in the wheel of this great machine. Huh? What was it? I just read something really far. The motto of the 1930s World Fair was uh, research discovers, engineering implements, and society adjusts. Sounds about right, huh? Nails it, exactly. You just have to adjust to it. There's nothing you can do about it. Huh? We're going to invent all these materialistic wonders. And even though they always create unanticipated problems, still, somehow or other, you have to adjust to it. See? You're going to work in this factory or in this business and we're going to take the results of your work and sell them for profit. And you're not entitled to any of that profit. You're not entitled to any of that income. We make a deal with you where we pay you less than the actual value of your work. And we take your work and profit from it and keep the difference. That's called a corporation. A corporation is a fictitious entity that has more rights than a regular person and less responsibilities. Uh, no one can be held accountable. No individual can be held accountable for the actions of a corporation. Slick, huh? This is what the demons have come up with. They're very intelligent. Hiranyakashipu is very intelligent, very strong, powerful. But because all of his plans were against God, eventually he was vanquished. When Prahlad started preaching in this way, 
Of course, the, uh, the young boys in the school became confused. Well, our demoniac parents are telling us that we have to do this and that. We have to make material advancement. We have to be competitive. We have to crush the demigods. We have to stop the process of God uh, consciousness and, and become engaged in material consciousness and work. Why are you telling us this, Prahlad? And Prahlad had to explain the whole thing. We're spirit souls, that we, we're not from this world, we're from the spiritual world. We don't belong in these bodies, we should be free. Huh? We're taking on all these materialistic designations and because of that we get so much karma and then we have to suffer, birth and death, and on and on. He explains the whole philosophy, five years old. I've heard this, actually I've seen this. In India, the children who go to the traditional gurukulas at very young age, seven or eight years old, they can explain you the whole philosophy. Just by hearing, they understand everything. Don't think that children are stupid, they're not. Jennifer was sharing one experience that she had. She learned sign language. And she taught her newborn boy to use sign language, which I don't understand, I'm just mimicking. Um, and so at six months, the boy was telling her, I need to eat something, I'm thirsty, I have to go to the bathroom. With sign language. You see? Spirit souls are, are not stupid. <laughs> but be, at that early age, the body is so undeveloped that the coordination between the mind and the tongue has not developed yet. So they can't speak and tell us their needs. But it's not that they're unconscious, they don't know their needs. No, they know everything. If they're given some way to communicate that doesn't depend on speech, they can communicate everything. Huh? Just like monkeys can be taught to use sign language and they were quite intelligent. They can count, they can reason. Huh? Monkeys. So a small child, if they hear this philosophy from the very beginning of life, they can understand it very nicely. It's just us who have so much conditioning in materialism. We have a hard time understanding. Huh? Like just recently, we had to actually expel one student from our school because they just could not understand that they were engaging in politics, materialistic politics. Politics is always materialistic. There's no such thing as spiritual politics. Huh? Politics is always materialistic because it's based on a lie. Huh? You listen to these politicians. Everything they say is a lie. The first lie is that we are here to help you. No, they're not. <laughs> they're in politics to gain their personal ambitions. Let's be honest. So the very first thing from the very beginning is a lie. So how can the rest be any truthful? Huh? It's not. It's not. Everything they're saying is completely false, bogus. But we accept it because we don't know any other way. When we hear transcendental knowledge, then we come to understand, oh, there is another way. We can trust in God instead of in human leadership. Uh, we can take the truths of the Vedas and we can manage our society and our lives according to them. We don't need this material science. We don't need all this material stuff. If I just have a garden, huh, 100 uh, square meters garden, I can feed myself. Uh, if I have a couple of hectares and a cow, I can feed my whole family. What's the difficulty? What's the problem? Why do we need all these big machines, Ugra Karma, huh? factories and slaughterhouses, and schools which are just like slaughterhouses because they're training people just how to be slaves of the demoniac elite. Huh? We could kick these rascals out in a, in a week if we wanted to. If everybody understood this, and simply stopped cooperating and did their own thing instead, or followed Vedic teachings instead, well, what could the demons do? They might maybe they kill a few people, but then they don't have anybody to work for them and feed them. They need their slaves, because huh? they're lazy. They want to live just by uh, investing. 
This whole idea of investment, capitalism, is a complete demoniac trip. Huh? As Prabhupada used to call democracy, democracy. <laughs> Try to understand. It doesn't matter whether it's democracy or communism or socialism or monarchy or feudalism or any of, this, any of these schemes dreamed up by human beings are the same thing. We're going to exploit you. That's material consciousness. So this conflict developed between Prahlad and uh, his school teachers. And the school teachers went to Hiranyakashipu and said, you know, we don't know about your boy Prahlad. He's causing a big disturbance at the school. And Hiranyakashipu was like, what's the problem? He's always 